going to jump into something that will make us say, probably time to end the world because we're all terrible. Good. Tom's house was broken into and he confronted the burglar and then had to go have eye surgery. You know that it's a time. <laughs> These are the weirdest days of our lives. It's all about the pasta. Mm-hmm. We've got more honey than any honeybee has mind. Get crazy, get loud, get crazy, get loud. Cabs are here. Let's find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real weird. It's reality TV corn. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? You came to me. And I apologize. Reality TV corner. Here we go. Reality TV corner. I know. Get crazy. Get loud. Um. <laughs> Reality TV is our life, and Ashley, I feel like I have questions for you also, but this is for after the pod because we have things to discuss, but yes, like do. reality TV related, we always have to have a sidebar, but this reality TV corner is upsetting okay. and is honestly, though, part of the reason that I wanted the segment to be on here because it is bizarre, it is weird, and it is like such a microscope look at humanity and like some of the evil that unfortunately exists so i wanted to do this topic for a long time i saved it as soon as i started the segment but listen some weeks went by and then guess what a documentary came out about it not surprising because it's a wild story but i just want everyone to know that i promise i was cool before this doc came out and i haven't watched it yet but I read like a like little summary online. It's 90 minutes. It's on Hulu. We'll talk about it at the end. Okay. We'll give it a little moment. But I don't think it does like a like a the complete deep dive. So I still am like, yeah, I'm gonna go into it. But I was like, how oh, dare so you? So listen here into first it. before you watch the doc. But this could be one of the most disturbing reality shows to ever exist. It took place in Japan. Um, there was a man named Tamaki Hamatsu, aka Nasubi, or Nasubi was okay. cast on the show Susunu Denpa Shonen in 1998, and he joined it under false pretenses and had no idea that he was going to spend the next 15 months of his life naked and isolated in an apartment. I just Broadcast live heard about like 20 this million people. for the first yeah. time. I know. And it's from 1998, but like Reddit just got a hold of it from what oh. I can find for the first time in like 2017. Okay. And then just in May of this year. Because it's doc clearly came out. not, uh, it wasn't streaming, on, it wasn't on ABC. No, right. <laughs> it wasn't easy to find. It no, and it was like only on Japanese television. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it just came over. But yeah, like Reddit found it in 2017 or maybe in 2016. And then like a doc came out in 2024. So now like, a lot more people are fully aware. So some of you may have heard of this, but he was broadcast to like 20 million, maybe more people. It was a super popular Japanese game show, but never had there been any situation like this because this was a show that was on for about five years and they put contestants in strange webcam type situations, like having them fend for themselves. But this person went through hell. So first off, Nasubi like the reason that is the nickname of this contestant, it it translates to eggplant, which is a nickname given to Tumaki because of his long face shape, but also producers used an eggplant to cover his genitals on screen, which I'm like, this was 1998. I have to remind you. And now the eggplant is always the, how do we know? So I'm like, I just kind of am like, um, hello. Japanese. Yeah, but I'm like, of course, Japan was on it. But I'm like, I just love hearing that that was going on in 1998. Now that is like just commonplace. But wow. So he signed up for this Japanese game show, Susunu Denpa Shonen, in 1998, thinking it was going to change his life. Yeah. The premise of the show was that he had to live alone in an apartment and he could not buy anything or bring any items with him, but he had to acquire items by winning them from mail in sweepstakes. He would finish the challenge once he had earned 1 million yen, roughly $8,000, in only a sweepstakes prize given way. So what started innocently, quote unquote enough, like, because I also just think this sounds unhinged already, but what started somewhat innocently enough quickly became a horrible, twisted, 
downfall into madness and this man just being like deprived of basic needs and made fun of on television. So he was isolated from the outside world, naked because he had to win clothes and observed by an unseen audience for a grand total of 335 days before he finally reached his target amount. Okay. (sighs) This man, just like a quick backstory, he was born in 1975, again, like known as Nasubi, like everybody nicknamed him that. Um, And this, I guess, started even before the show, and but it caught on, and that's like why they started using the eggplant for his genitalia. But... There's not a ton of history on his upbringing, but by the time he was in his 20s, what we do know is he did want to be a comedian or just a showman, a performer of some type. And so he gets this opportunity that comes to his lap that says, "Uh, we have a show business related job for you. Opportunity. He is a young up and coming entertainer. So he's like, let's do it. Um, And it's on this Japanese reality television show that had other seasons. So Susunu Denpa Shonen, which translates to do not proceed crazy youth, which is just funny and fascinating knowing the end of this. But so the show like had already been on for one season, I believe, but he was like, oh, this is going to be great. Um, So he got on there, but this specific challenge, because it changed season to season, it was called My Life in Prizes. So he came on to this and the producers said, you have to live alone, the mail-in, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, I can do this, but like, I'm going to be naked. All he knew of the cameras that he was aware of in the room were that they were webcams. But in 1998, this was a new thing. And reality TV was very much not a thing yeah wasn't even like oh i'm the truman show and people can watch me at all times i think he was just like it's almost like what we know blogs or vlogs as today like he was being recorded but he didn't think he was being broadcast live to millions of people but he was yeah he thought that like maybe they were gathering footage that they would then edit together to make a show and like cut things out that weren't appropriate or precisely not show him nude to his entire country maybe exactly so they did him the service of the eggplant over his genitalia but like he did not know how much he was being watched by everybody they also had a laugh track going over everything he did and so people would watch him once like a little bit edited together with the laugh track over it even though everything he's going through is sad and like it took him a while to win prizes and get money and get a proper amount of food he was getting like very minimal jake johnson jake johnson jake johnson just talked about this that's how i know it (laughs) wait on his podcast he talked about it on stavi uh stavi's world on stavros halkius's podcast yes yeah that's where i knew it from because he said he got some inspiration from it for that movie he just did on hulu that was mid. It was okay. fine. Ugh. All right. All he was right. good. But I love that. Yeah. Because I love me some Jake Johnson. Same. I was just watching. Nick Miller, Nick Miller. Anything. I was watching podcast clips of him and Winston talking about all of their bits and behind the scenes things. And I was like, I haven't watched New Girl in so long, but I just <laughs> love you too. And like, talk about it forever. I know. Okay. So Nasubi, he couldn't purchase food, entertainment, communication devices. This is crazy. For him was the apartment itself and basic utilities such as water, electricity, heat, and a stack of magazines in which he could find the mail-in sweepstakes that would provide more for him. Okay. When he arrived, the producers asked him to remove all of his clothing and pointed him to the stack of magazines and a pen, and they just said, good luck. He assumed the show would film and later be edited once the production had wrapped. Again, knew nothing about the cameras, but he was being taped and the show was rebroadcast shortly after once the footage was gathered and the emojis were put over it. It was so popular that the format was eventually switched to a 24-7 live stream, which utilized new technology. Again, this is brand new at the time. And the technology was able to do this 24-7 coverage, broadcast it out. And on top of it, the new technology could cover his genitalia live because that was also very brand new. I bet you got a little peaks, though. You know you got a little peaks. Every once in a while, that icon probably moved. He jumped. We probably saw some things. So he lost a good deal of weight before winning some sugary drinks in one of the sweepstakes that he entered. 
His first big win came in the form of a large bag of rice. And finally, he had something to eat, but there was another problem. He had nothing to cook it with. He had no stove, no pans, no nothing. He had to just eat rice raw. But at least it was mother truck and something. And just a reminder, like nobody is sneaking in his room and actually giving him nutrients. He's just eating raw rice in front of the whole world and nobody is doing anything about it. Then he devised a method of cooking the rice in a bag placed like next to one tiny flame. He was able to get like, I think there was a stove, but it like didn't turn on on most of the burners, but like one tiny, like, what is it called? The pilot light came on and he was able to cook the rice next to the pilot light and kind of heat it up. And he had to discover that because he's basically on the show Lost yeah. or on Survivor. But he shouldn't be. So he had nothing to entertain himself with, no one to talk to, no personal hygiene tools. His hair started to grow long and unruly, as did his fingernails. He spent all of his time naked. And he finally won a pair of women's underwear. They didn't fit him. So he just... He had absolutely nothing. He eventually won dog food. That was probably the best nourishment he got, he has said later in interviews. So that is unfortunate. He also won a stuffed animal and that became his friend. And then it even eventually graduated to sensei. Became a bit of a mentor. So he was only communicating with this stuffed animal. It was like, this is my friend. Right. Like, I have to talk to somebody and Wilson. I'm going to eat dog food and have my, I know Wilson, which I'm like, don't get me started on how much I cried when that damn volleyball. <laughs> away. So I feel like that is what he is going through. He would occasionally win prizes like movie tickets or a bike, but you okay. can't use any of those things. And just, I'm, I have to say these things because I'm like, He's winning these prizes, which is the whole point of the game, but half of them are not helpful to him. And the fact that nobody was like, should we step in for the survival of this man? But no, instead they're inserting more laugh tracks. They're having watch parties, like popular Japanese, like social and culture, like pop culture based shows are starting to get the 24 seven feet and making their shows revolve around them. Like people are, it basically is the Truman show where people are like gathered, having watch parties, like a hundred people deep. Except for Truman lived a pretty comfortable life. He did. I know it's like everybody could see him, but he had basic nutrients, but like, just like the being watched (laughs) and being laughed at part of like, and not being in on it. But yes, this man is starving. He is not. Truman live in the, com- the comfy lot. Um, he even won a TV at one point and he was so desperate for just like knowing what was happening in the world around him or also having entertainment besides his stuffed animal mentor. But they yeah. said, we are not giving you access to cable. So like, goodbye. And also, we don't want you to accidentally <sighs> catch your feed. <gasps> oh, yeah. Duh. But I was like. But his popularity was becoming so big that production started to become worried because people were starting to learn of his location based on clues they were getting from the apartment and fans and paparazzi were starting to arrive outside. And Nasubi even one Uh night, one night was awoken by it. And they were like, come with us, come with us. We will take you with us. Like jump out the window. We'll help this happen. But finally producers intervened. Oh, like we don't care about him eating. Or taking, right. you know, care of himself, but we'll intervene and like get you out of here so the fans can't uh, take you away. So there was a super heartbreaking moment where he was moved to a new apartment and he thought he was blindfolded and moved. And so he finally thought that something was going to change, but they just moved him to a new, more secret location. And they had taken the rice out of his prize bag when he arrived and he was basically starting from scratch when he finally thought he was being released. And this had been months at this point. He finally, in this new apartment, continuing with his sweepstakes, won a pan to cook his rice in and he got a VCR and a PlayStation so he could entertain himself. So like things were looking up quote unquote, yeah. but he was, he was not well. But then he won a set of four car tires 
But no car. Good. And But it got him closer to his goal because of the value. So right. that was good. And then it was one more bag of rice classic that finally pushed him to his 1 million yen mark. And his isolation came to an end. So he was like brought out into the world. He had been in isolation for 335 days. But then he was brought to another location and asked to strip down once again. For what reason? No, what? just for the public. Just for humiliation's sake. Then he was tasked with the challenge of surviving on sweepstakes winnings, and the producers informed him that once he was naked, that he did not need to accept the challenge if he didn't want to, even though he was already naked in front of the whole world once again. And because he was so... I like to think, and like obviously psychologists and people who have looked into this think... Because he was in such a strange physical and mental state by this point, and it had been months and months, his brain said, I want to do it. He was like, I've come this far. I will accept another challenge. So he did it again. But this time, his goal was only to win enough to pay for an economy class ticket on Japan Airlines to return home. And he reached that goal too quickly. So then producer said, Business class instead. Oh, no, then first class, just to keep oh, him even longer. my God. But he did reach his goal in a matter of weeks, and he was flown back to Japan and then taken to another apartment. Nasubi looked around the small apartment, removed his clothes, and he was like, am I still not done? And the producers were like, we have one more thing. You are back in Japan, but we have one more thing for you because I guess at some point he was in Japan, but was moved. I think the third location was moved to South Korea and it was like, Jesus. good morning. But now he's back in Japan and they say, we have one more surprise in store. The walls in this last apartment collapse around him and he is surrounded by a massive crowd of cheering people. You can see this moment on YouTube. He is naked. He, is he looks bewildered? like Tom Hanks from Castaway, speaking of that Wilson moment. And he is horrified. It actually like brings a lump to my throat because I watched just that clip. Because again, I haven't watched the whole documentary. I'm sure it shows a lot more. But he is just like, he's bewildered. He's shocked. He's sad. No part of him is relieved. He's just like a whole audience is here and this fake apartment was in the middle of a television studio and a large tv was displaying a live feed for him and for everyone to see and he still had no idea that it had been broadcast this whole time but he was just kind of like what like he didn't even know what to do so the host finally talked to him say that he has finally won but he basically couldn't speak and was kind of mute through the whole thing he had spent 15 months cool alone in a couple of different apartments but completely isolated naked mm -hmm. barely any food nothing to keep him busy but yet the show broke multiple records and his memoir about the experience like of course that he wrote you would hope became a bestseller but also took a major toll on him and i know that he wrote a bestseller but then also like the hulu documentary he was interviewed on, I know, but I think after that he was like, and then I never want to talk about it again because he is still yeah. like, I actually can't believe that this happened to me. And like, I do want people to hear about what I experienced, but at the same time, like, what is wrong with the world? I can't imagine watching something like that and finding it entertaining. I know. As much as I love reality TV, I'm like, I don't think this would have gotten me. I would have been really upset i i would like to think i shouldn't say that because i wasn't you know aware of this existing at the time but i i can't see myself enjoying this no i think i would be pretty horrified but i also wonder how many of them thought that it was fake in some way yeah like that he knew what was going on he knew he was being like he was in on it he was getting compensated really well, like something. I wonder if like I part of, of them were too. like, oh, he signed up for this. He knew what he was going to get into. And like, it's all sort of, you know. I agree. 
But I don't know. I haven't seen any clips of it. It seems pretty horrifying to me. And that is why I was like, at the end, I will give a shout out to the documentary. It is called The Contestant, and it is on Hulu if you have a subscription to that or if you can borrow a friend. From what I've read, again, like now I kind of want to watch it. But it, I think... It interviews people who admit to being fully invested and interviews producers who worked on it, who have now like had a bit of a come to Jesus moment saying like, we didn't fully understand what we were doing. The producers I have less, you know, grace for, but the people who are watching it, I do think there's people who come forward who are like, we watched it because we didn't know that the bad treatment was as real as it was like we were just seeing it as a piece of entertainment we had to believe he was more in on it so I do think there's something to that there's fear factor and things like that but all those people like you know at any point they could be like no thank you I won't eat the bugs correct you know did they know he had no way out yeah lay on a bed of nails or whatever do you remember MTV's fear Yes. Ah, that show was so I fucking like they scary. Went too far. They went it was so way terrifying. too far. I remember there was one episode where like one of the challenges was, you know, they always had to go off on their own, which like no, I'm like, there's no <laughs> way. You need somebody else. I wouldn't no. even go off on my own. Like they'd be like, Ashley, you have to go to the far corner no, of thank the field. You. I'd be like, I'm out. Sorry, I guess I don't win. Don't give me the money then. Like but, I am out. <laughs> they made this girl go. They were like on this haunted farm and they made this girl go and basically she had to take like two full bites of like a pig's foot. Yep. I, it was a pig something and I remember the exact episode. I think it was one that I had to like either hide behind a blanket from or just turn off. And I was like, no. I don't remember if she did it or not, but I remember just being like, no way in hell would you give me to eat a pig's foot or a Mm -mm. pig's ear or Mm -mm. a pig's i can barely eat a pig i can barely eat ham (laughs) i can barely eat canadian bacon i can can barely eat eat. no honeyed ham no and when it's like there's There's no no seasoning it is just a raw like a raw thrown in your foot Fear was bad. Fear factor was bad. Like, and naked and afraid is even bad. I'm like, all of these things lead into what this man was put through and everyone was just watching. And he, like, he has oh given speeches at, like, many different things. And again, like, did this documentary. And, like, there's pictures of him speaking, like, with Japan's Ministry of Justice. And during COVID, he gave uh, a lot of talks because okay. he was like, here was what I isolation, know isolation was for me. And if you are feeling alone, let me talk you through it. Which I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, you were born for this. Like, you're one of the only people who can speak to this in such a unique and important way. So, like, he has been able to do so much with that, which is exciting. And he still did end up doing, like, a little bit of acting work in Japan, you know, and, like, a few guest starring roles here and there. So he never stopped, like, performing and seeking entertainment, which I'm like, good for you. You didn't give up on your dream. But for the most part, he is just like, I have never been put through something so difficult. And looking back, I'm like what happened do do you know was there any point during the show that he was like i want to go home i want to quit yes because he would say it to the cameras not knowing if anyone was listening but he was also before he got his stuffed animal and probably even after too that he was talking to a bit so you could like hear his true thoughts and i think he vented to the animal but he would write postcards and letters even like not even to anybody uh specifically but he was just writing to anybody who would listen it was like i need to get out of here i need to find a way home i thought filming like would have stopped by now like he did say it a few times but nobody was checking in with him so he just had to like accept was it. he locked in yeah he had no way out and no one was checking in with him he was only checked in on like if a delivery was being made or the couple of times he was being moved or the time that fans were like disrupting his sleep so it was like otherwise no one was speaking to him and like i did see one clip of like a speaker coming on and saying like hey we're like we're dropping off a prize and he is like horrified when the speaker comes on because he's been living in silence for so long and it shows it just it really shows his isolation and how he had no chance it is 
insane that this existed as crazy of a list as there is of reality shows like we can go on and on with the segment this one is wild yeah it might just be time to end it i know we might just be done we're cooked we're We're cooked cooked. we're cooked baby this and that's why i'm like (laughs) listen is the pope prophecy for just the Catholics, or is it for all of us? Because we might it deserve to Japan? burn. Because what the fuck, I know. Japan. Come on, Japan. You do Japan. a lot of things that I love, and I'm so excited about. But what mm-hmm. was this? But you what do a lot of things that this? I am concerned about. 